season is about to change. My, my days are about to shift. My circumstance is about to turn around. It's a season of change. Sometimes things in life change. In the town of Newcastle, PA, tradition runs deep. In a small, once booming city full of steel mills and opportunity that held roughly 30,000 people, things look perfect. But today, things have changed. And there are a whole lot of negative things you can get into if you're not careful. With the dwindling population now down to about 10,000 people, there are not many job opportunities and crime rates are high and drug use is rampant and infrastructure decay has plagued this city for the last couple decades. There are still a couple things you can hang your hat on though. Number one, there's great food. It's known as a self-proclaimed hot dog capital of the world due to its great chili that I've personally feasted on excessively on numerous occasions. Many great Italian restaurants that will make your taste buds jump for joy. And number two, fireworks. Newcastle is known as the firework capital of the world. Each summer, holding a firework festival that is second to none. Number three, a great winning tradition from their high school sports teams. When you put on that intimidating red and black for the Newcastle Red Hurricanes, you're expected to win. More times than not, Newcastle delivers in every sport. At the height of its powers, Newcastle was a football town. Starting with the legendary great coach, Lindy Laura. He instilled hard work, discipline, and most important, winning in every person he's ever encountered. But today, things have shifted a bit. Once known as a football town with over 700 wins, which is a record in the WPIAL, is now known to be a basketball powerhouse. Led by a coach that is trying to build his own legacy, Coach Ralph so, Blundo. Yeah, you know, I grew up here. I grew up in Newcastle. My father owned a sporting goods store downtown Newcastle, and uh, man, it was just a great place for me to be because you know all the athletes in town were always you know, frequenting the store. And um, my dad would spend a lot of time telling me why Newcastle was a special place and um, why we had such tough kids. You know, we were an old steel town with uh, fathers who were working hard every day, working shifts, you know, hard hat, lunch pail type parents, and they raised their kids that way. Um, so when teams came into Newcastle, and in particular at the time it was football, when teams came to Newcastle, man, they knew they were getting smashed in the mouth. and. Um, you know, I kind of fell in love with that uh, idea. And then as time went on and, uh, you know, the mills started to close and things started to change and poverty was taking over, um, the mentality began to change. And I often thought to myself, you know, how do we bring that back? So, um, you know, that's kind of what I wanted to do here mm -hmm. uh, as a basketball coach. While winning is important to him, it is not his priority number one. His number one goal is to turn all his players from good kids to great men, both on and you, off the court. You, you talk about how whenever you were younger, things were on the, on the up. Mm -hmm. Now, not so much in our community. Mm -hmm. And you get kids that are different now than they would be back in the day. Mm -hmm. But what you're doing with the kids is you're changing them from what their background, where they may come from, to be good men and good people both on and off the court. How do you go about doing that? Well, because we know it matters. You know, I think the biggest thing is is that we don't give them much time to do anything but what we do. So they're in school and then they're working. And uh, because our kids have the ability to, uh, because our community now fosters this type of behavior at times, they can get themselves in trouble. And they're, we have people in our community that uh, really um, aren't deeply entrenched anymore. They weren't born here. They came from, they don't have the pride that we have. So uh, we don't want our kids surrounded by that. We, we want them in the gym where we know that we can teach them, talk to them, mold them, foster them. And really, throughout, it's really all about what's next. You know, when I get a kid, it's about can I get them ready so that when that last day comes, they're ready to go. Mm -hmm. And they're ready to go and be successful, um, not just go and 
you know, a lot of times we have kids come back to Newcastle because they struggle with that next step because they've been spoiled here or they haven't been required to work hard. When our kids leave here, they're ready for just about anything we hope. That's how we do it. Blunder has helped bring Newcastle 200 plus wins with over 20 wins every season. With a couple completely undefeated seasons, he's led the Canes to WPIAL Championship five times and stands undefeated in those contests, so as well as a PIAA state championship. And so, you know, it's the best one in the world, especially with the guys that you've been playing with since you was in like the fourth grade. You know, there's no better feeling. Hard to explain. I mean, 31 and 0 first state championship ever at Newcastle High School is hard to put in words. There's been some a lot of good teams in Newcastle, football, basketball, a lot of good teams, and it's hard to put in words. You almost getting emotional thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, I am. I am. I am. Really? <laughs> yeah, I am. It's hard. It's hard to talk about. Sean Anderson and Malik Hooker. Both extremely special the young men. Hooker today is in the Hooker. NFL and plays for the Indianapolis Defensive Colts as a free safety. Sean Anderson plays Steve and will graduate Jeeves. from the Naval Academy. He is a kid that just keeps getting better. Through hard work and determination, he was a leading scorer for the Naval Academy and has been a recipient of numerous awards for his display of good character. I was always raised based on the principle that this life is not lived for us. You know, I was raised in a Christian home, so we believe that our purpose is much bigger than ourselves. So when the Naval Academy came calling, it was almost like second nature. It's like, well, why wouldn't I go to this school? Growing up where I'm from, uh, I'd always make the joke, I don't have any role models, but now I had to be one. There's something about having someone that's just a couple years older than you that you can look at and say, I want to be like him. It's just very fundamental for kids. So not having that really sparked a fire in me to want to give that to other kids. I just want to give to them as much as I can from what I've been through. My freshman year of high school, I got made fun of. I was the kid that people wrote off. I was always not tall enough. I was always not fast enough. And I played along some great athletes. I was never good enough. I started to see the issues that young kids were going through. If I don't start helping this problem, then who's going to? My senior year, we started a program called Moving Forward for the freshman class. That's where I would say the inner workings began for us realizing, okay, we would like to do something bigger, which turned into Forever Red Hurricanes. That's what laid the foundation for us to realize, okay, kids really need this mentorship. So for the sixth graders at the elementary school, before they go to the high school, we start an event called Transitioning to Success. We bring back college students who want to be teachers, and we just talk about bullying. We talk about having a dream-oriented life. A lot of people will ask, you know, like, why, why are you doing this now? You, know, you have a lot on your plate with the Naval Academy, but, I mean, why not? I'm still a young man trying to find my way into adulthood. The crew banded together was in no higher display more than in 2012. When Big Corey passed, it was a sad day for all of the community. No one was more devastated than Corey Jr. His dad was everything to him and taught him everything he knows. The day of the funeral, all of his teammates were present and was able to be there for their brother. A community once drawn apart is now more banded together than ever. Violent crimes have gone down and graduation and college attendees continue to rise. Newcastle has seen a lot of changes, wins and losses. People will come and go, and while everything is not perfect, there is one thing that's constant. With the support of the community, the desire to win on and off the court from both its players and its coaching staff, Newcastle will continue its tradition of holding up that trophy as one. Whether in life or on the court, or on the field, winning is now something this town believes they can achieve together.